You're listening to Partnernomics Podcast, where we discuss the art and science of developing successful strategic partnerships. To learn more about the suite of Partnernomics solutions, visit Partnernomics.com. So today we have, man, I'm really looking forward to this one. This is going to be a great one. Uh, so Mo, I'm it. Yes. From hey. SAP, joining us from the other side of the world in uh, the UK. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Very good. Thank you very much. You know, keeping the spirits up, given where we are with lockdowns and everything. But thank you for having me on. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, we are as well. So Mo is responsible. Mo's a VP for Alliances and Channel for EMEA with SAP. And uh, Mo is doing some awesome stuff with his, uh, with his team. And so many of the, the, the things that Mo's working on is what we find ourselves right in the middle of. So Mo and I, man, we, it sounds like we already have a lot of things in common. So definitely looking forward to, to digging into this conversation. But Mo, if you wouldn't mind, we love to start just by having our guests talk about their, their backgrounds and how they got into this world of partnering. Would you mind sharing your story with us? Sure. So, um, yeah, I've been in in what we call the source to pay space for about 20 years. And um, I, I started out really um, being kind of like a lot of people, I guess, do as a developer, which turned into a consultant, which you know got involved in implementations. And as I was going and starting to lead teams, I started getting involved with some of the big SIs. At, at that time... I was already an SAP partner. So um, being an SAP partner meant that I was beginning to understand the art of selling somebody else's product, but also looking at both the delivery and then the innovation side. But connected to that, we were beginning to work with the likes of IBM and Accenture and, and so on, right? So we were a small organization, um, you know, connecting to some of the big guys and that's when I started getting in touch with, with kind of the partnering piece and understanding the, the, the dynamics of it. But when I left there and moved to SAP, I've been at SAP now for, for nearly five years. Um, and over the last five years, I've slowly kind of started creeping towards the partner area. So initially, um, we started off with the mid-market place, uh, really targeting the mid-market uh, working for a fantastic boss that I had, Mike McGuire, who, who I still work with now. Um, and we were really starting in a large company, but starting from scratch on something that had not been done. And that was target the mid-market, create a product, and then go and enable a set of partners. And over the period of two and a half years, we enabled 150 partners in EMEA and MEE. So that was really right ground up. It was, okay, so you've got the expertise to, to deliver, et cetera. Now let's talk about this revised product, let's call it, for the mid-market. And we talked about everything from enablement to value propositions to selling motions to delivery and, and then customer success. So that, that was really when I got my hands really dirty with it because it, was, it wasn't just a relationship management piece it was more really driving um what what i think was innovation because it was something new in the mid-market and, and you'll hear me say innovation a lot because i love it um but that was fantastic and being part of that team uh really helped kind of drive that and then in april uh, 2019 i was given the opportunity to take this role by my now boss uh, dave johnston who's um been looking after alliances for a very long time uh super great guy um and from that it's really been not only looking at the, I'm going to say, medium and, and small partners to now working with the larger partners at a more strategic level. So getting involved with the likes of Accenture, IBM, et cetera, et cetera, um, EY and PwC and Deloitte, um, got fantastic relationships with them and really digging into that in a much broader fashion. So then, it, then it's become not only about, oh, the relationship or the product or delivery, it's much more strategic than that, right? Really looking at it from the bottoms up, right the way to, to looking at innovation, product, um, process, how it all marries together, how we benefit prospects, customers, et cetera, out there. Um, and that's been a fantastic journey. I'm absolutely 
uh, I've been thrilled to be part of that journey. So, yeah. So Mo, uh, tell us if somebody has been living on the moon for the last decade and they're not real familiar with SAP, uh, but, but specifically talk to us about the different solution set of, of what SAP is, and then we'll evolve the conversation to talk about how partners can also bolt on functionality. Wow. So, so SAP as a whole, I mean, largest software company in the world uh, covers almost every kind of solution that you can imagine that a business needs. But, um, you know, typical pillars, I would say, are, you know, HR, customer experience, supply chain, um, what we call spend management, which is procurement and, and all of the facets that come between that. So they're the lines of business, but that's then connected to what we call, um, you know, the digital core, the ERP, uh, the intelligent enterprise, right? Um, which is SAP S4 HANA. Um, and that, that's a lot of products. I mean, <laughs> if I went into every module, I mean, it would blow your mind. Um, all of this connects together. Because the idea is that using that digital core, you, you really um, solidify an organization's uh, technology stack and the processes that go with it. And then the lines of business that I mentioned then tag onto it to be able to give you best in cl class products in each one of those areas. So I I'm, I'm on the SAP procurement side, which is the spend management side. So I'm in one line of business, I would say, although I traverse others because naturally you connect into other processes. So that's what SAP is. Um, on my side, like I said, it's, it's more around the spend management procurement side. So I, I, everything from uh, um, supply chain to to the management of procurement processes in general and all the way into payments and invoices and all of that. So that's all interconnected. Um, even contingent workforce, so the management of your workforce through our field glass solution. And then that connects, like I was saying, you just start traversing it, it connects into the HR function. So, you know, what we cover in, in my area is still very broad um, and there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and we have... You know, if, if you look at the analyst report, we are, you know, um, best in class. I mean, there are other players, of course, but we are best in class and we have been for many, many years. So, so Mo, we talked a lot about um, ecosystems mm -hmm. and kind of this, this idea of the, the new world <laughs> of, yeah. of building, not thinking about products, not thinking about services, but really thinking about solutions for our clients. Yeah. And SAP just, I mean, you guys are a platform that really enables an ecosystem. Talk right. to us a little bit about just how you view as an executive with SAP, how you view ecosystems, and then just how executives should think about ecosystems and the evolution of leveraging the power of ecosystems. So I think, I mean, um, SAP, let me pick one area, SAP Cloud Platform. Now, SAP Cloud Platform was built to allow the extensibility and extension of the core solutions. So have, give people the capability to build um, product solutions, um, extensions on top of the core. And it's interesting because I joined SAP because I got tired of losing against them, okay? Um, being you can't beat up. them, join them, right? If you can't beat them, join them. Well, <laughs> you know, um, and, and the reason that that was the case, I mean, you know, five years ago, six, actually, six or seven years ago, there started to be a transition from being kind of niche solution providers to suite providers. And uh, Alex Atzberger, who was the, the president uh, of SAP Rebra at the time, did such an amazing job of making that suite look so damn good that everybody else was having a real problem, right? Uh, and, and I loved that vision and, and I joined um, for, for, for that very reason. It was another gentleman called Paul Devlin as well, who was looking after Amir at the time, also a fantastic thought leader. So um, I joined at the time because of them. Fast forward five years and we're going back to the best of breed conversation. Everybody's talking about best of breed. So it's like, oh, now the analysts are saying, oh, you should buy the best solution for each different area. But guess what? That's 
how SAP, SAP's best of breed is the ecosystem. The ecosystem provide the best of breed solutions that you need in order to um, get the solution that you want for your business. So, and a lot of people don't see that. And, and actually that's where I see the biggest, I think most, it's, it's not really a challenge. It's only a challenge from the perspective of people, I don't think know or understand what is available to them. And we'll talk about my video series that's connected exactly because of that, that's been created because of that. But also the opportunity, um, you know, as a business, you may know procurement, but you may have some development talent and that development talent could well build those best of breed type solutions that will um, augment the core. That's the opportunity. And that's what I love because having a platform as big as SAP, you have all of the opportunity in the world to do that. And from an ecosystem perspective, that's why it's so powerful. That's why Christian Klein, our CEO, is putting all of his bets on the ecosystem, right? Yep. Mo, it's, it's never fun to, you know, as, as business executives to compete in this bloody world of low margins, everything being yep. commoditized. Yeah. Right, so as executives, what we need to do is create that differentiation, mm -hmm. innovate, provide more value to our clients. Let's talk about innovation and what SAP is doing and how a lot of the partnerships that you have is to drive and bring more innovation mm -hmm. into the platform. Talk, talk to us about innovation. I know that's a huge passion of yours, but... Uh, how should executives be thinking about innovation now and going into the future and how do you leverage it? Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at, um, if you look at where we are today, I was having conversations only this week with a couple of partners um, and they're getting under price pressure because as soon as you only think about delivery, in, especially in today's world with COVID, everything's remote. So guess what? That $1,500 a day that you were able to charge or $1,800 a day that you were able to charge before for your premium consultants, people are now saying, well, why am I going to pay that? Right? Well, I ain't going to pay that. You know? So you've got, you've got to have something else in your locker, right? And going off and having 100 you know, offshore resources, okay, that's one way to go. But that's not what's going to move the needle. When an RFP comes in or an RFI, um, or you're even looking at, and this is what I strongly want to encourage people to do more of is look at your go-to-market, right? What is it that you're actually wanting to tell people about your business? It should be focused on what you, how you innovate, what you're bringing to the table that is different. And it's not just because you have the best resource with the most procurement knowledge or whatever that is. That's not what's going to move the needle. It will help some. It, it does help. But that's not what's going to get you there. What's going to get you there is for you to look outside of the box and go, OK, well, you know, we've got SAP as a platform. We know that. What is it that that solution provides to, to and what is in the roadmap? So, so be a bit savvy, understand what's coming up and look for the opportunities to go, well, right, they're not going to cover this. We have it could be an industry sector, right? Particular industry sector that requires a particular piece of functionality that may be in the roadmap, may not be in the roadmap. But if you want to, if you're nimble enough today, and most organizations are more nimble, you can go and build that today and go and sell that today and give yourself a differentiator against your competition. And if you're not thinking like that, it just makes me go, how are you looking to grow your business? How are you looking to differentiate? How, use that strength of knowledge that you have the strength of development that you have, and if not, partner with somebody. Where SAP is really into partner, partner to partner collaboration. So look at those opportunities as a way of driving business growth. I want to see as 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 an exec on the partner management side. I want to see that more. I want to see our partners really driving that more, because if you're not, you are going to leave yourself far behind. My opinion. 
Yeah, Mo, talk to us a little bit about the the different types of partnerships that uh, you know that, that you help manage or oversee from SAP's perspective. Um, I imagine it goes beyond just technology partnerships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we've got um, so there's both the size and then there's the so there's depth, breadth, and reach as some of my colleagues colleagues use for our solutions. But I think you've got. Um, you've got a lot of smaller organizations. So you've got the advisories and those advisories, you know, that's everyone from, you know, one of the, one of the, the advisories that, that I absolutely love working with is a little company called Odesma. Um, they are a super great um, little outfit who really understand their subject matter and have a unique way of going up, going about things. But then you've got the likes of Deloitte and Accenture and, 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 and PwC. So you've got the larger guys that, you know, and, and that's where you get into the, you know, the, the verticals and the, the horizontals and, and how that links together. And that's a complex but interesting conversation because they bring something to the table that others don't. Um, you've then got kind of the SIs, um, which are kind of delivery focused as well as some technology focused there um, and strategy and consulting kind of linked to that. Um, the consulting piece is, of course, very big there. And, and then, of course, you've got the, the I guess, this, this, the way that we look at it is three different pieces. We, you've got um, technology providers that we resell, so the likes of DocuSign and, and, um, and Salonis are examples of that. But we've also got best-of-breed partners like um, iCertis, who are contract management, or Seal Software, who are part of DocuSign now, or... or Thomson Reuters, who provides a, a tax solution. Um, so that's kind of, you're getting into the ISV side, right? And then we've also got a real financial and, and network play. So, the, so um, SAP, um, Ariba, uh, the reason that it's very well known is we have the biggest uh, business-to-business network solution. So we're, we're kind of siphoning that off in some way and saying, that as a technology platform for the whole of SAP is huge. We're consolidating those networks. And that in and of itself, if you think about how rich that data is, when, you look, when you're talking about trillions of transactions, that data, big data, right? Everybody wants big data. Imagine what you could do with that. If you don't see that as an opportunity today, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> But so, so that's, they're the different types. I mean, there are others as well, but in the main, uh, we've got MSPs as well. So um, managed service providers that, that kind of look at, um, especially in the contingent workforce side to, to, to kind of help an organization really manage their contingent workforce end to end. So I've, I've probably missed some, um, but but in the main, they're the ones that we kind of work with. And and then there's the, 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 there's the large and then there's the boutique consultancies as well. So a lot of partners, and a lot as of you people. mentioned it's as you mentioned before it's ecosystems huge. it's big it's huge <laughs> there's uh it's it's quite expansive mm. uh, mo i'd love to just pick your brain a little bit you guys have god hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different partners whether you're talking yeah. about you know the the sales the distribution the referrals the technology uh organizations yeah. that 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 are bolting on to your larger solution um no secret that there's a high failure rate of partnerships in general, whatever organizations yeah. work together. Talk to us a little bit about how you vet potential partners, like on the front end of having those conversations and even how you kind of just manage relationships um, yeah. and alignment of partnerships, you know, going on, how to, how to nurture those. Talk to us a little bit about partnership success. Yeah, yeah that, that's, um, that's, that's an interesting one because, um, I mean, having, you know, you can imagine that we were doing our planning, right, for, for, for 2021. And, and you start look, you having you start having those conversations of going, well, your tier ones, your, your tier twos, and then what I call the nurture bucket, right? Because you're always, as I was saying earlier, when we were doing the mid-market space and we, we were targeting 150 partners, that's a lot of people you have to talk to. But when you look at the successful ones, they were the ones that, that, that took the concept, really owned it. it it's about ownership. Um, one of the, the ones that are most successful are the ones 
that really own what they're doing, understand the culture of the organization that you're working with. So, I mean, understand SAP. You need to understand SAP. And if it's not SAP, if it's Oracle or anybody else, right, you need to understand the culture. Um, and then connect into the sales organization to make sure they absolutely know what you bring to the table. And that's, they're the ones that we see the most success with, right? The last piece is, of course, innovation. But innovation is a relatively new topic. It's going to sound crazy, but it is. Um, the ones that are bringing innovation to the table are now beginning to really excite people and go, oh, okay, I've got something else in my kit bag that I didn't have before. So they're, they're the recipes for success. The ones that do it well follow those things. The ones that don't do it so well, we're having to enable them, help them, and in some places teach them how to do certain things. Um, often it can be a consulting organization and you're asking them to do demand gen. They're like, what's that? <laughs> right? So you gotta you gotta teach them that. You gotta help them in, and, and and this year we've really put a program in place to really help partners to kind of drive that. Um there's uh, there's the whole piece of, you know, our, Jody, um, who looks after our sales enablement, um, she has done a fantastic job of pulling together, right, well, if I was a new partner today, what would I have to do to get successful? So there's a whole tranche of things that takes you through ena sales enablement. What do I need to understand? Uh, how do I position? What's the value? Uh, what opportunities do I have to innovate? Then there's pre-sales and you do the same thing there, right? You know, how, how do I demo the products properly, right? It's not, you know, see all of those things. And then there's delivery and the certification and, and, and ensuring that your people understand the solution well enough. Um, and once you've got those building blocks together, then you've really got my team helping to drive that out. So, but it's very easy to see which ones, like I said, are managing that effectively and which ones are. And, and, and to be honest, um, failure, sometimes I wonder if that failure is almost on purpose, because if you deal with something in a tactical fashion, your results are going to be less effective. If you pick it up as a strategic driver, then you're going to have the focus, and, and therefore the execution is easier. Now, um, so, and, and, and it's also about monetization of the relationship, um, where you're seeing how you're tying in your business goals to what SAP can bring with you and having that conversation. So, so they're the kinds of things that we're working on, we, and we really then end up having to put partners into buckets. It's not like you really want to. But the reality is that you have to in order to understand what the lay of the land is. Um, so, yeah, that's something that we're, we've, we've done already. So we know who needs the help. We know who doesn't need the help. Uh, and we know those who are going to be tactical. And that's OK. It's fine. But the level of attention you get versus one or the other is therefore different. Right. But you expect that. You've just got to be savvy about it. Yeah, I mean, not all partners not all partnerships not all relationships are created equal right I mean, you have some truly strategic uh pieces and then you have other partnerships other opportunities that are not as strategic but uh especially as an organization that is going to be partnering into sap you want to try to be strategic to sap if you can because it could change your whole world and 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 one of the things that uh you know I'm really interested in. So, so I think we're going to talk about innovation, but I think the other element is, is not only a technology innovation piece. It's, it's like, if you are a, it's, it's connecting the dots. So I was talking to you about the digital core and, and the different lines of business. Um, if you have people, and I know that there are partners out there today um, that have competencies in each one of those different areas, but what they don't do today is link all of that together to be able to go to a customer. Imagine from a customer perspective, um, being able to tie all of that in, link it together, have all of your processes managed, and you've got a partner who can help you through all of that. 
that's big. Today, you end up going, oh, I'm going to talk about HR here. You know, I'm going to talk about supply chain here. And, you know, and so you've got different partners doing different things. And, and that can be a strategy, which is, which is fine. But the other side of it is, I think you end up missing the trick because there's pieces that interlock. Um, I, I really, the ecosystem has so much opportunity. That's why I'm so passionate about it. Um, and, and I want to see more of that coming from the ecosystem. Yeah, there, there's, there's, of course. there's so much opportunity from just the, the right. partnering lane, the ecosystem lane, the innovation. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's, I started my career over 20 years ago at Sprint, the middle of a technology company, mm -hmm. making phones do all the right. crazy things that they do today, right? Now, the last thing we think about is making a phone call. It's all about, you know, getting content and these sorts of things. But it's, it's, it's amazing how much acceleration we've just had and how much just the infusion of technologies it's five five six years ago whenever i started partnernomics and worked with companies i used to ask them do you consider do you classify yourself as a technology company now i say since you are a technology company like every other company in the world what does that mean to you and how are you leveraging technology but as we look forward over the next five years i mean we're just on this hockey stick are we not we, we are, and, 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 and I think that's because there is a real, and, and again, this probably sound crazy, but I think there's a, a, a real navigation to making the customer real, the customer centered to, to the whole thing, right? Um, and, and when you start looking at what it is that, that the customers need, that opens up opportunities in and of itself. I think I think if you if you look at it in a more siloed way, um, that there's a lot of benefits to that. But when you look at it in a more holistic way, and what the ecosystem brings, and what the core, uh, you know, vendor brings to the table, what the, how the customer leverages that, um, that that there's there's a lot more that can be done, and and that's where I think you're seeing the technology ramp up. We know is happening. I mean, that's accelerating massively, right? And I talked about big data earlier. In my opinion, in, in my space, that big data piece is not being leveraged anywhere near enough. Anywhere near enough. I mean, it, we are at like that, and it, and, it, and it could be, I mean, we did, some, we did some design thinking a couple of years ago, actually, uh, with IBM, where we were talking about, you know, advanced technologies and, and how we could leverage those advanced technologies to further the procurement agenda, okay? And that was all about data. Now, two years later, I'm still not seeing enough of it. We're doing loads of things. And you're going to see over the next 12 months, SAP's got some fantastic things coming out. I wish I could talk about it more, but I can't. Um, there's some really, really great stuff coming out that's going to leverage that. But I, I want to see the partners do it. I want to, because I think they'll come up with things that, are, you know, that will be really innovative, really interesting. And customers will be going, God, they're either, they're either going to say, why didn't you have this before? Or they're going to say, I want that now. And that's, that's the exciting bit. The, you know, come on, jump, get on the energy. Take you know, my energy. Talking about innovation. So many times I think companies, those executives, they look at their product suite and they look forward. I love what you said is start with a customer. What is the customer? What are their challenges? What is, right. how could you make their easy button bigger? And that's your target. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then use the core and build around it. And, and guess what? That customer is going to be sticky, right? Everybody wants sticky customers. Well, they're going to be sticky because you're, you understand them. You're building things to help them. You've got a great core solution. You're getting the support that you need. And that's how we build customers for life. That's what we want. That's what everybody wants. So Yeah, love that. Yeah. Mo, let's uh, transition here at the end and talk about your new project, Mo Proclamation. <laughs> Talk to us yeah. about it. I mean, what is it? Why did you uh, build it out and uh, how it's uh, a resource for folks? Yeah, sure. So um, I decided to pick up the innovation piece and, and, and start to run with it a little bit. What I was realizing was I was having a lot of great conversations every day. Um, and I just felt like, the world needed to know about that. Why am I only having this conversation? Why didn't I share this conversation with the world? So the, the idea behind Mo Proclamation 
and I only called it Mo Proclamation because Proclamation was taken by some other organization somewhere in the world, um, is, is really around ecosystem innovation. So the idea behind it is, and we started with Accenture, um, and Pablo, shout out to Pablo, who really helped me with that. Um, we did four videos on the bounce, um, talking about some of the things that Accenture have done with procurement technology linked to SAP that really, in my view, changed the game, right? Um, so they've, they've built a fantastic chatbot called Paola. Uh, really wanted to talk about that. Um, in, and then they've got a few others that are coming. I won't talk about every single one of them. But the idea was I wanted to try and push one video a week um, forever if I can continue doing it that way and really talk about innovation innovation from both a technology standpoint but a process standpoint as well so what process innovations are there out there that could help a business uh, what technology ones uh, are out there as well and we're also going to add in things like thought leadership uh, in, you know in terms of certain topics um, we'll also do some live sessions as well um, but the intent is to help people understand the innovations that are out there from the ecosystem um, you are our best of breed so I want the world to know what the ecosystem is bringing to the table, how they can benefit customers um, and give them a voice because the ecosystem needs a voice. Um, and I'm going to try and be that voice. That's the whole point. Yeah, love that. So YouTube channel, right? That's probably the, yep. maybe the easiest way to find that. Just go to YouTube and yep. a Mo Proclamation to a search for that. Subscribe right. and people will see the weekly videos that come out. Correct. And I'm, I'm going to be, I post them on LinkedIn. Um, so you can connect to me on LinkedIn and you can follow me there. Um, Instagram as well, although not everybody talks about procurement on Instagram as much as they should. Um, but yeah, YouTube's going to be the core channel, but we'll, we'll connect out from there. And, and if anybody's got any questions or want to know more, then hey, you know where I am. Come and get me. That sounds great. Well, thanks for that resource. I look forward to, to checking it out. Bo, it's been awesome chatting with you today. Uh, it's going to be awesome to continue to watch the work that you're doing at SAP and keep up the good work. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe we do it again sometime once this thing moves. So, Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right. Have a good day, Mike. All right. Cheers, man. Partnernomics Podcast is brought to you by Partnernomics. Learn how to leverage the power of partnership. To listen to more episodes of Partnernomics Podcast, Visit partnernomics.com.